Hey guys, sorry this review is so late. Um, the mo movie review I'm going to be talking about today is The House with a Clock in Its Walls by director Eli Roth. Um, the reason why it is a little later than usual um, is the week that this film came out, I was busy with a friend's wedding. I uh, was l literally busy that whole week. Um, that Friday, that Saturday, and that Sunday I was gone. Um, and then obviously the following week, I was my, finally my chance to see this film. Uh, so sorry this review is a little late for you guys today. Um, just a lot going on. Um, I knew that late September for me, for 2018 specifically, was going to be very busy. Uh, but here I am reviewing the film for you guys today. So let's get moving forward with the new Eli Roth film. So uh, In the House with a Clock in Its Walls, you guys, this is Eli Roth's first family-friendly film. Uh, this is his first probably non-R-rated film, I believe. Um, definitely one of his first films he's ever done for children or family-friendly environments I would say even too um, but in this film you guys uh, this young boy is an orphan um, his parents uh, got um, killed and so basically he has to find another family member to live with so um, his uncle takes him in um, his uncle lives in a very strange house where things seems to be, be um, very alive in the house uh, there's magic everywhere uh, the furniture seems alive um, like everything about this house seems alive in some way and so it's, it's kind of hard for the boy to get used to, uh, but he later finds out that his uncle is a warlock, um, and a warlock is basically a male witch, so basically like someone who can possess magic and make spells and all that kind of stuff. So um, he's very fascinated by his uncle's abilities, and so he wants to learn magic himself, and so um, obviously his uncle takes him under his wing, and there is a clock every night that ticks very loudly in the house, and the uncle's always looking for the for this clock in the house every night. Uh, so basically, not only is the boy learning magic, but he's helping his uncle find this clock that apparently seems to be in the house somewhere. Um, the former owner put it in there, and um, his uncle never really found out what the clock does, so that's why he wants to find it at night, because it's the loudest at night. Um... So while all that's going on, through a series of events that I can't explain without spoiling the movie, um, there is uh, a character who has a connection to this house, and he becomes um, alive again. He's back from the grave, and um, it's up to this boy who's now learning magic with his uncle, and his uncle has good friends with a witch next door. Uh, it's up for all of them to kind of take down this person who wants to take this house and take this clock of significance um, out of the house and use it for their own good which unfortunately would be very bad for everybody else if they got a hold of it and stuff like that so there's a lot going on within this movie called the house with a clock in its walls so overall guys i really enjoyed this film a lot um normally eday roth is not really a director i go to per se but i did really like his involvement in the movie grindhouse um he got to do a fake trailer called thanksgiving and that which i really liked um, he also has an acting role in Quentin Tarantino's film in that movie, which was Death Proof. Um, I don't think he was involved with Planet Terror for that Robert Rodriguez film that was in that movie, but um, he was very involved with that movie, and that was kind of the most Eli Roth exposed I have been over a course of all this time watching movies. Um, you know, sure, I'm familiar with other things he's worked on, like Hostel and Green Inferno and Knock Knock and all this other stuff he's worked on that clearly I haven't seen. Um, so this was kind of my first exposure to one of Eli Roth's films in quite some time, and let me tell you, I'm very happy that this is one of his better films, um, and I really hope he makes more family-friendly films here in the future, because after seeing him take it on for the first time, I'm very happy to see kind of what he's able to do with it and stuff like that. So for my pauses of, of The clock, the House with a Clock in its Waltz, it's a very long title for this movie, um... I like how this film is allowing uh, the horror genre to be for kids. Uh, we really don't get to see that a lot. I would say besides Goosebumps, maybe elements of Nightmare Before Christmas, and maybe elements of Corpse Bride, we really don't get to see this genre a lot for kids. And I really like how Eli Roth is trying to find ways to make it acceptable for kids and allow kids to kind of be a part of the fun that it doesn't have to be a genre just for adults uh, you know kids can enjoy this genre too it just has to be handled a certain way uh there has to be levity handled in a certain way the humor has to be handled a certain way um it's all about handling uh, that genre in a certain way for kids and i do feel like eli roth did find the right balance for this movie and i really do feel that um 
allowing this genre for kids is kind of something that everybody can work collectively on. Um, there's really not a definitive way of doing that yet, but I feel like directors like Tim Burton, Eli Roth, and all of them are finding ways to make it work for them. And as a result, maybe when they get older, we can have another great horror director as, as in the future years as a result, or you know, it, we can get people more interested in this genre at a younger age. And I think that's a kind of a fascinating idea to me, too. Uh, and that goes into my next positive for this movie. Um, Eli Roth's transition in the family films, like I said, has it's a very strong uh, opening and start for him. Um, I would love to see him do more family films. There's a, apparently a rumored Jim Carrey film at some point he wants to take on that might potentially be a family film, potentially. Um... And hopefully it is, because like I said, I really like how he handled the horror genre for kids and families and stuff like that. So it was just enough where it's taking risks, where you might not think it might work for kids at first, but there's just enough there where um, the kids can follow it, there's you know enough going on, and it's, it's not so scary to the point where they can't watch it, but at the same time, it's trying to encourage them to be a part of this genre some more and stuff like that. So I do like how Eli Roth is really trying to push for allowing a bigger audience to kind of be a part of this genre. I think that's, a, once again, a very interesting idea. I do like the use of warlocks and magic in this film. It definitely has a very Harry Potter, series of unfortunate events, and goosebumps feeling in this movie. I would say all three of those stories and books and films... Uh, are very much kind of the tone of this movie. Um, I do like the use of warlocks and magic and kind of how the film explains what they do, what they can't do, what certain books can do, what they're kind of forbidden to do and stuff like that. So the film has an interesting way of exploring magic, and I thought that was a very interesting way that the film handled all that. The film also takes place in the 1950s, and I think that's great because the tone of this film, the feeling of this film, and even the setting of this film is all in the 1950s, and it definitely fulfills that very well. Um, it definitely has that cheesy, late-night horror kind of vibe to it, and I really, I think that really works well for this movie, because it's definitely fitting for the house that Jack Black lives in. It's, uh, it definitely is fitting for the kind of superhero characters and movie characters that this kid likes to watch on television and stuff like that. Um, it's, it was just a very fitting feeling for this movie and a very inviting feeling for um, everybody who came to see the movie, too. I also like how this is a dark film that, take, that does take risks. Uh, there is some images in this film, I'm not going to lie, that definitely are borderline, might be too scary for kids at some point, but I do like how Eli Roth, once again, is really trying to push the envelope of Making a film that maybe kids could be interested in the horror genre some more. It, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a genre just for adults and for a PG-13 crowd. What if it's handled in just enough in just enough of a way where um, it could be a PG movie and it can be, you know, potentially kind of scary in certain areas, but that's kind of what horror is about, so you really can't make it too gentle at all times. Like I said, I do really like this balance that Eli Roth tried to have here, and I really like that it is a dark film that does take some risks, even though some of those images are probably going to be pretty freaky for certain kids, not going to lie. But, like I said, it is a dark film that takes risks that I'm really glad that Eli Roth took the time and the journey to be able to accomplish for this movie. Um, Jack Black and Kate Blanchett are also very good in this film. They have great chemistry. They have great back and forth. Almost all the better jokes in this film are definitely jokes that they have and jokes that they tell to each other back and forth. So very good job on their end. I really like how they handle their characters in this movie. I also thought all the child actors are very good in this movie. Normally in a film like this, you know, you might get one or two child actors that are really good at what they do. Maybe a good Macaulay Culkin in there or something like that. I really do think Eli Roth did hire all the right kids for all the right roles. I really do feel like... There wasn't a bad child performance in this movie. It's like when the kids at school, all the kids really do feel like they belong in those roles. Uh, it really doesn't feel like they've been coached to death over the scene and that they had to re-choreograph and just re-coached re hundreds of times to get the scene and the take right and everything. I really do feel like 
Eli Roth did find the right people to really make sure that these roles get fulfilled in the best way possible. But from the negatives of the House of the Clock when it's walls, overall, I thought the story was pretty predictable. It's definitely a story where however you imagine the story kind of playing out in your head when you're watching it, it's kind of the film you kind of get. So unfortunately, there's not too many surprises in that sense. There's nothing super shocking about it in the sense of throwing a curveball at you and giving you a plot line that you weren't expecting. Most of the stuff in the story I was kind of expecting from the get-go. Um, you know, the villain had to come back somehow. The kid had to do something really kind of not so great to kind of impress the kid, the other kids at school and stuff like that. So there's there's things like that in there that are kind of predictable and you kind of see them coming from a, while, a mile away and stuff like that. But uh, it's still a great story. It's just kind of a very predictable one. Um, some of the jokes in the film felt flat and repeated to me. There really is a lot of jokes here that are just kind of fall flat and they kind of get repeated. There literally is a lion poop joke that's used more more than once in this movie. Uh, maybe certain kids will think it's really funny, but it is kind of repeated more than once. And that by by the time you reach like the third and the fourth time that the film does it, it does get kind of repetitive. So there is some flat and repeated jokes in this film that I think could have been benefited from a better writer, hopefully. There's also some very strange uses of CGI in this movie. Uh, there's one I really can't get into too much detail on, but there's something that involves the Jack Black character that is very weird. It, it uses a lot of CGI. It's, it's done near the very end of this movie. I'm sure it was intended for a joke, but it just looks very weird. Um, there's, like I said, there's a scene toward the end that I can't get into too much detail on, but there's a lot of really strange uses of CGI in this film, and there's one in, in particular that involves Jack Black, something that happens to him in one scene that just comes off as very weird and unusual. So cert certain uses of CGI in this film were just really too strange for their own good, so some of the CGI moments I thought could have been handled better. Overall, I'm going to get The House with the Clock and Its Walls a 9 out of 10. It's a very good movie. I highly recommend it. I really like how Eli Roth is trying to make a horror genre for kids somehow, some way. Uh, even though the story is a little predictable, some of the jokes do fall flat and get repetitive. And some of the uses of CGI are a little strange. But 9 out of 10 for me, I really like this film. And I do really high re highly recommend the film, The House with the Clock and Its Walls, to, family, to families, to kids, to everybody everywhere.